Hey everyone, this is Scott from the Scott the Girl Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Rewatching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Today I'm going to be talking about Season 2, Episode 16, Afterlife. I'm just going to start it off with the plot summary, then just talking about some um, different elements I liked about this episode, along with some foreshadowing Easter eggs I noticed. Uh, so let's just get started with that plot summary, which says, Gordon takes Sky to Afterlife, a haven where Lincoln explains to her that most people are transformed, are chosen and prepared for it, and then a guide is selected to help those people master their new abilities. Sky's guide is the founder of Afterlife Shinzi. I don't know how to say that name properly. Uh, well, Gordon will guide Reyna, who still wants to die. When, Go when Gonzalez asks Fitz and Simmons to help him open Fury's toolbox, Fitz refuses and decides to leave S.H.I.E.L.D. while well, Simmons agrees to help, though this is a ruse, so that Fitz can take the toolbox with him when he leaves. Coulson and Hunter steal a Quinjet from Gonzalez's agents with the help of Agent Mike Peterson, aka Deathlock, who has been hunting down Hydra scientist Dr. List and found him experimenting on gifted people. Uh, with the appearance of Peterson, Gonzalez fears how many super-powered operatives Coulson has, but believes that he still deserves fair representation, so he asks Agent May to serve on their S.H.I.E.L.D. board. Uh, Coulson soon realizes that the person most involved in this shield threat that can, they can turn to is Ward. Uh, so that plot summary missed a few things, but I really liked I liked this episode for some stuff. There's a few things that were a little bit boring. There's a lot of talking going on in this episode, uh, but we do get to learn a lot from some of that talking. Uh, but yeah, not as much action, even though they like broke into the one cabin at one point. Still wasn't the most action-based one. We started to learn, we learned about this afterlife place, this haven where, you know, Sky's mom is the, you know, is the founder of it and different powered individuals come to. We learned that most powered individual people already know about it beforehand and that the fact that they haven't used a diviner and the way that Sky became, uh, gained her powers, the way Sky and Rain both gained their powers hasn't been done for thousands of years. Uh, so they're kind of a little bit of outcasts even among these outcast people already. It's kind of a little strange. Um, it's really kind of weird that um, Lincoln keeps forgetting that Sky doesn't know more about this. You know what I mean? Like he's supposed to be her like, not guide, but like just her help, her transitioner, right? Helping her transition, but he's not explaining anything. I guess that's fair because he's, you know, he's used to everyone else already being prepared for this. I found it a little weird that they kept going back to that, that he's just like forgets that she doesn't know anything about this. But it also kind of gives them a reason to explain everything. So that's why there was a lot of talking in this episode. Uh, but I do like the introduction of Lincoln's character. I like his power. The, I'm always a fan of somebody who can manipulate electricity. So that's cool. Uh, we didn't see much of Sky's power in this episode. A little bit of it, but she's still a little scared of it. It was. I thought I like. I liked the technology they were kind of using to help her heal. That was kind of interesting. The little uh, acupuncture needles that were like got some kind of charge going between them. I don't know. I don't know science, but I just liked that element. Some other stuff I liked about this. What we have um, afterlife. Yeah, I already talked about that. Oh, Bahrain. At one point, we see Gonzalez brings up the file where uh, that says Bahrain and. Well, you know, that's where uh, Agent May got her name, the Cavalry. So I like that they dropped another little hint at that. We still haven't seen that scene yet that shows us exactly what happens. I think it happens sometime this season, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty interesting that they keep dropping those little things. And then that Gonzalez knows exactly what happened. And he's, you know, like calling May out on it a little bit. He's like, you know power people can get a little crazy sometimes, May. You know. It may just like stop bringing that up. I don't like when you bring that up, people. Why you gotta bring it up? I don't like it. Y'all know I don't like it, but y'all bring it up anyways. She just, I get it. She says all that with a dead, silent face. Doesn't say any words. So that's what you know she means. So like, stop talking to me about this. I won't talk about this. Uh, so, so I enjoyed that little element of it. What else do I have written down? Oh, we got Coulson and Hunter on the run at the beginning before they stole the Quinjet. Uh, I like that little bit they had at the car dealership and the two. I just like the way they're kind of buddy copying it through this kind of, you know, bon, as they put it, Bonnie and Clyding it actually through their kind of on the run from the real shield. Uh, and I just thought that was fun. It's a fun element. I forgot that it was Mike Peterson who he had called as backup, so that was a pleasant surprise in this rewatch that it was, you know, Deathlock who showed up to save the day. I totally blanked on that. I was thinking it might have been one of the um, uh, Koenig brothers, 
you know, when the twins, I thought it might have been, well, not twins, they're like, whatever, there's like five, ten of them, I can't remember how many of them there are, but I thought it may have been one of them, but then obviously Mike Pierce just shows up and I'm like, oh yeah, that's it. That was a pleasant little surprise. I like that they, I like that they don't overplay Mike Peterson in this show, because they really easily could have after that first season. They could be bringing him in, like, all the time if they wanted to, but I like that they, you know, they kind of play it lightly with him. They don't know what, they don't overdo it with him. So I really enjoyed that little pop up of him. Uh, what else do I have written down? Oh, Fitz leaving the um, leaving Real Shield with the toolbox. I like that little you know little ruse that the two of them put on. Fitz and Simmons put on you know, and the fact that they know each other so well that they you know put on a fake show without having to actually communicate a plan because they know each other so well and they're so in sync. And I like that she packed him a sandwich at the end because that's what true love is. Packing each other's sandwiches. Yeah, I need a sandwich. Anyways, that's all the stuff I had written down for this in particular episode. Was there anything that you guys liked in particular about this episode? Any elements of foreshadowing or Easter eggs that you noticed that I may have missed? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for joining me today and have a good one.